In the interest of the learners, this video is brought to you by Educationist Guru. In this video, we are going to learn about entrepreneurship. The term entrepreneur is derived from the French word entreprendre, which means go between or to undertake. Thus, an entrepreneur is any person who undertakes the risk of establishing and running of a new enterprise. There are different types of entrepreneurs on the modes or objectives or ventures. These classifications are not mutually exclusive. The entrepreneur is usually a sole proprietor, a partner or the one who owns the majority of shares in an incorporated venture. An entrepreneur supplies risk capital as a risk taker and monitors and controls the business activities. He is someone who exercises initiative by organizing a venture to take benefit of an opportunity and as the decision maker decides what, how and how much of a good or service will be produced. How Entrepreneurship is Defined Over the Ages Adam Smith in 1776 considers entrepreneur as a proprietary capitalist who supplies capital and work as a manager intervening between labor and the consumer. In 1870, Francis A. Walker calls the entrepreneurs as engineers of progress and the chief agents of production. Whereas J.B. Say in 1824 defines entrepreneur as an economic agent who assembles factors of production, set prices of produce in such a way that ensures the cost and profit, reaccumulates capital and possesses administrative and productive knowledge. According to economist Joseph Schumpeter, entrepreneurs are not necessarily motivated by profit but regard it as a standard for measuring achievement or success. Schumpeter discovered that the entrepreneurs greatly value self-reliance, strive for distinction through excellence, they always favor challenges of medium risk. Modern entrepreneurs are defined as an organizer of an economic venture, especially one who organizes, owns, manages and assumes the risk of a business. In the words of Robert D. Hisrich and Michael P. Peters, entrepreneurship is the process of creating something new with value by devoting the necessary time and effort, assuming the accompanying financial, psychic and social risk and receiving the resulting rewards of monetary and personal satisfaction and independence. The academic definition of entrepreneurship given by Stevenson and Jarello states that entrepreneurship is the process by which individuals pursue opportunities without regard to resources they currently control. The venture capitalist definition given by Fred Wilson states that entrepreneurship is the art of turning an idea into a business. Basically, entrepreneurs assemble and then integrated all the resources needed, the money, the people, the business model, the strategy to transform an invention or an idea into a viable business. The definition of entrepreneurs have changed drastically over time with their changing roles. The word theory originates from the Greek word thoros, which means a spectator. It stresses the fact that all theories are mental models of the perceived reality. Theories are a set of assumptions, propositions or accepted facts that attempt to provide a plausible or rational explanation of a causal relationship among a group of observed phenomena. There are various theories of entrepreneurship which may be explained from the viewpoints of economists, sociologists and psychologists. For a scientist, theory refers to the relationship between facts. In another word, theory is some ordering principles. According to Joseph Macy, there is a diversity of approaches to the study of entrepreneurship. There is difficulty in defining just what entrepreneurship is and identifying just who is an entrepreneur. There are different opinions on the emergence of entrepreneurship and these opinions may be classified into three categories. First is the economist view, second one is the sociologist view and the third one is psychologist view. According to economists, 
Entrepreneurship and economic development are independent. Entrepreneurship is an integral part of overall economic development. There are different famous theories which are given by economists like Levinstein's X efficiency theory, JBC's theory, Schumpeter's theory of innovation, Papenick and Harris theory, Harvard Business School theory, Kirzner theory of entrepreneurship, Knight's theory of profit, Hayek's theory of market equilibrium, and Marquesson's theory, economic theory. Marquesson, in his book Entrepreneurship and Economic Theory, he states the demand for entrepreneurship arising from the demand for change. He holds the thought that entrepreneurship is a result of conducive economic conditions. Economic factors that encourage or discourage entrepreneurship include taxation policy, industrial policy, easy availability of raw materials, access to finance on favorable terms, access to information about market conditions, availability of technology and infrastructure with marketing opportunities. Frank Knight's risk-bearing theory is adopted from Richard Kentel and NJB Say, and he adds to it the dimension of risk-taking. According to him, risk-taking is a central characteristic of entrepreneurship. This theory considers uncertainty as a factor of production and holds the main function of the entrepreneur as acting in anticipation of future events. The entrepreneurship earns profit as a reward for taking such risks. Jean Baptiste say, an entrepreneur is an economic agent who unites all means of production like land of one, the labor of another and the capital of yet another and thus produces a product. By selling the product in the market, he pays rent of land wages to labor, interest on capital and what remains is his profit. He shifts economic resources out of an area of lower and into an area of higher productivity yield. Also within the firm, he is the coordinator and moreover the modern leader and manager. J.B. Say is the first economist who stresses this managerial role of for the entrepreneur. Compared to other classical economists, Say gives a very prominent position to the entrepreneur in the entire system of production and consumption. He extends the entrepreneurial function as defined by Cantillon. However, by treating entrepreneurship mainly as a superior kind of labor, Say consciously or unconsciously directed attention away from the uniqueness of the entrepreneur role. Now the sociological theories. Sociologists are the view that entrepreneurship is most likely to come out or emerge under specific social, cultural, social sanctions, cultural values and role expectations are the determinants of the growth of entrepreneurs. Some of the theories which fall under this are theory of entrepreneurial, Supply by Cochrane, Theory of Social Change by Hagen, and Theory of Religious Belief by Max Weber. Max Weber's Religious Belief Theory says religion has a large impact on entrepreneurial development. According to Weber, some religions have basic beliefs to earn and acquire money, and some have less of it. He calls them a spirit of capitalism and adventurous spirit. The spirit of capitalism will be generated when mental attitude in the society is favorable to capitalism. According to Max Weber, driving entrepreneurial energies are generated by the adoption of exogenously supplied religious beliefs. It is these beliefs which produce intensive exertion in occupational pursuits, the systematic ordering of means to ends, and the accumulation of assets. His theory suggests the belief system of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam do not encourage entrepreneurship. His stand has been challenged by many sociologists. Max Weber's theory is shown in. Many thinkers have accepted the Weber's analysis of linkage between religious belief and entrepreneurial growth. But this view is not accepted universally. Samuelson criticized Weber's view on the ground that capitalism also developed in those societies where Protestant ethic was not prevalent. Hoslitz argued that Protestants could not develop industries in France because they were not given political security. It can be concluded in the words of Carroll that ethical values have some effect on entrepreneurial growth, but to consider them all in all would be unrealistic. Hagen's theory of social change is also known as withdrawal of social status theory. 
Hagen argues that withdrawal of social status in respect of a group or society is a seed for entrepreneurial activities. It typically happens when a group or society feels that its value and status are not being respected in a society whereas they respect the society's norms and values dearly. According to Hagen, falling are the condition in which the status shall be considered withdrawn, like displacement of a society from its previous status by force, relegation in values, symbols and signs of the society in the perspective of superior society, non-acceptance of st status and values by larger society after migration to new place. Possible reaction is like a retreatist, like works and does not concern himself with the status, ritualist follows the norm of the society with no hope of improvement, reformist they try to change the status by efforts and rebellion, an innovator creative and try to achieve by himself. According to Hagen, creativity and vigor of a disadvantaged minority class is the main source of entrepreneurship. For an example, samurai community of Japan where the military nobility and officer caste of medieval and early modern period in Japan. The status was deprived later. To achieve their lost status, they got involved into entrepreneurial and risk-bearing activities. Thomas Cochrane's Theory of Cultural Values According to him, an entrepreneur is an outcome of a social environment which is constituted by his own attitude, role expectations by sanctioning group and operational requirements of the job. The core idea behind the theory of Cochrane are cultural values, role expectations and social sanctions. Social environment is the biggest responsible force for the entrepreneurial growth in any nation. In most of the countries, entrepreneurs have emerged from a particular society or caste, like samurais in Japan, Yoruba in Nigeria, Kikuya in Kenya, Halai Maman in Pakistan, Parsis, Marwalis and Gujaratis in India have been a source of entrepreneurship. Psychological theories suggest that society is going to have a wave of entrepreneurs and growth in entrepreneurship will occur when society has sufficient supply of individuals possessing particular psychological traits or characteristics. Few of the prominent theory are theory of personal resourcefulness, theory of entrepreneurial supply, McLean's theory of achievement motivation, Kunkel's behavioral model. According to psychologists, entrepreneurship is most likely to emerge when a society has sufficient supply of individuals possessing particular psychological characteristics. The main characteristics are an institutional capacity to see things in a new way or having a new way vision, energy of will and mind to overcome fixed habits of thought, an urge to do something or to fulfill a dream, the capacity to withstand social opposition and the high need for Achievement McLean's need for achievement theory is another well-known need with theory of motivation as opposed to hierarchy of needs or satisfaction dissatisfaction is a theory developed by David C. McLean and his associates. McLean developed his theory based on Henry Murray's in which he developed long list of motives and the manifest needs used in his early studies of personality. McLean's need theory is closely associated with the learning theory because he believed that needs are learned or acquired by the kinds of events people experience in their environment and culture. He found that people who acquire a particular need behave differently from those who do not have. His theory focuses on Murray's three needs, achievement, power and affiliations. Need for achievement is the drive to excel to achieve in relation to a set standard and to strive to succeed. In other words, need for achievement is a behavior directed towards competition with a standard of excellence. Need for power The need for power is concerned with making an impact on others, the desire to influence others, the urge to change people and the desire to make a difference in life. People with a high need for power are people who like to be in control of people and events. These results in ultimate satisfaction to men. Need for affiliation is defined as a desire to establish and maintain friendly and warm relations with the other people. The need for affiliation in many ways is similar to Maslow's social needs. 
The people with high need for affiliation have the following characteristics. They have a strong desire for acceptance and approval from others. They tend to conform to the wishes of those people whose friendship and companionship they value. They value the feelings of others. Kunkel's theory is given by John H. Kunkel advocated the theory of entrepreneurship supply. According to him, psychological and sociological variables are the main determinants for the emergence of entrepreneurs. He contemplated that entrepreneurial talent can be found in minorities, religious ethnic, migrated, displaced elites and these minorities have supplied most of the entrepreneurism in the society. Kunkel's behavioral model is concerned with the overtly expressed activities of individuals and their relations to the previously and presently surrounding social structures and physical conditions. Behavioral patterns in this model are determined by reinforcing and aversive stimuli present in the social context. Hence, entrepreneurial behavior is a function of the surrounding social structure, both past and present, and can be readily influenced by the manipulative economic and social incentives. Dynamic theory of entrepreneurship was first advocated by Schumpeter, who considered entrepreneurship as the catalyst that disrupts the stationary circular flow of the economy and thereby initiates and sustains the process of development. Embarking upon new combinations of the factors of production, which he succinctly terms innovation, the entrepreneur activates the economy to a new level of development. Schumpeter introduced a concept of innovation as a key factor in entrepreneurship. In addition to assuming this and organizing factors of production, Schumpeter defines entrepreneurship as a creative activity. An innovator who brings new products or services into economy is given the status of an entrepreneur. He regards innovation as a tool of entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is viewed as the engine of growth. He seeks the opportunity for introducing new products, new markets, new sources of supply, new forms of industrial organization or for the development of newly discovered resources. Furthermore, Schumpeter makes a distinction between an innovator and an inventor. An inventor discovers new methods and new materials. On the contrary, an innovator is the one who utilizes or applies inventions and discoveries in order to make new combinations. An inventor is concerned with his technical work of invention, whereas an entrepreneur converts the technical work into economic performance. An innovator is more than an inventor because he does not only originate as the inventor does but goes much farther in exploring the invention commercially. The concept of innovation development embraces five functions. Firstly, the introduction of a new product with which consumers are not yet familiar or introduction of a new quality of an existing product. The second is introduction of new method of production that is not yet tested by experience in the branch of manufacture concerned, which needs by no means be founded upon a discovery scientifically new and can also exist in a new way of handling commodity commercially. Third is the opening of a new product that is a market onto which the particular branch of manufacturer of the country in question has not previously entered, whether or not this market has existed before. Fourth is conquest of a new source of supply of raw material. And the last one is the carrying out of the new organization of any industry. When we critically examine Schumpeter's theory, by stressing about the innovation function of the entrepreneur, Schumpeter ignored the risk-taking functions, which is equally important. When an entrepreneur develops a new combination of factors of production, there is enough risk involved. And in spite of this lacking, the theory supports the enterprising spirit of entrepreneur to innovate. It is the act that endows resources with a new capacity to create wealth. Drucker says, innovation indeed creates a resource. It endows it with economic value. Schumpeter's view are particularly relevant to developing countries where innovations need to be encouraged. The transformation of an agrarian economy into an industrial economy 
required a great deal of initiative and changes on the part of businessmen and managers. Thanks for watching the video.